Today's sponsor is Magic Cutlery Cereal, because that's definitely what we're eating today. What's up? This week, like every week, we're talking about freedom. In my experience, most people haven't thought much about what that word means. You know, they'll say freedom is good, but are they free? How would they even know? Anything you don't question can be used against you. Any words can be hollowed out and filled with propaganda. In this video, we're looking at how the idea of freedom gets twisted to mean anything the people in power want, and how we believe in freedom on paper, but not in practice. I call the freedom we're taught to believe we have imaginary freedom. But to start, let's talk about real freedom. I think freedom, at least on one end of the spectrum, means doing whatever you want. There are long philosophical discussions we could have about what that means, but I think we can use it to measure our own freedom against. So one way to think about freedom is to think of the things you're restricted from doing and why. You could start with the law, which limits your freedom to the extent police will stop you. Among other things, the law claims ownership of your body. Have you ever considered that? The state grants itself ownership of you. So depending where you are, you can't do drugs, you can't engage in sex work, you can't get an abortion, you, maybe you just can't date someone whose birth certificate has the same gender marking as yours because you're not allowed to do what you want with your own body. The state claims the power to override your decisions and do what it wants with your body, including restraining you, locking you in a cage, and even killing you, if an agent of the state decides it's necessary. How can you be free if you don't own your own body? Think about work. Work takes up most of your time if you're anything like most people. Are you free at work? You're not free to do what you want to do or say what you want to say. In fact, at work, you're probably under constant surveillance. Your every move subject to scrutiny from people higher up the ranks. How can you be free if you're under a corporation's thumb all day? Think about money. In a world where everything costs money, you only have freedom to the extent you can pay for it. Yep, you can have your own house if you can afford it, and most people can't. You can have a box in the sky to live in until you can't pay rent. You can eat whatever you want, unless you have to save money for all the other expenses in your life. You can travel anywhere, unless, like most people, you can't afford to. When you have lots of money, the world is your oyster. When you have no money, the world is terrifying. How can you be free if you can't afford to do what you want? Finally, culture itself can be extremely restrictive too. A lot of people demand strict conformity to their culture. Conformity kills freedom. It kills the individual, subordinating them to vague cultural values and fads, and empowers a few people to punish in the name of those values. All mass cultures have their authoritarian sides, supported by a right wing cultivated by the ruling class to keep people divided and distracted. Most people are so inured to this way of living, they don't know something else is possible or desirable. Most people uh, don't consider what freedom is, and people who don't consider what freedom is don't think about how much or how little they have. It's hard to envision freedoms you've never had and never even heard about, and easy to give up on freedoms you've always been told were unreasonable, like going where you want to go, dressing the way you want to dress, and dating someone you might want to date. 
Some people think of free or unfree as a dichotomy, but I think of it more as a spectrum. You might be free in some ways, but not in others. Or they might think freedom is just whatever the government says, and you're allowed certain specific freedoms that the police can take away whenever they decide you no longer deserve them. They think of freedom in narrow terms, not as a long and ever-expanding list of freedoms everyone should have, not as safeguarding people's ability to do whatever they want as long as they're not stopping others from doing the same, but a limited number of specific rights enumerated and hopefully enforced by the state. When you give the state the power to decide which freedoms you're allowed, you're also letting the state decide when you're no longer allowed whatever limited freedom it's granted you. You're saying the law, the police, and the judge can all decide when you can be free, and when that privilege is to be revoked. Some states identify entire racial or cultural or gender groups and revoke the freedom of everyone in that group, though it's not usually explicit policy. Why would you trust the state with your freedom when by its nature it's constantly taking freedom away? I'll say we don't have freedom of speech because for the most part you're not free to speak up at work or in school or in court. And people tell me, but that's not what freedom of speech is. Freedom of speech is, apparently, the very limited freedom afforded by some states to say things outside work, school, and court, which, of course, the police can curtail if you draw a crowd. Sounds awesome. I'll say we should have the freedom to go anywhere we want, and they'll say, but borders as if borders were natural and necessary. Every freedom you could want has people ready to tell you why you shouldn't be free. In fact, they'll argue for why they shouldn't be free either. I'll say, you should have all these different freedoms you don't have, and they say, no, we shouldn't, and neither should you. Not unless the government allows us, anyway. The state is the exception to every principle and value we're ever taught to believe in. We like freedom, but you should always comply with the law and the officer's orders or else it's your fault whatever they do to you. We believe in justice, kinda, but selling weed is illegal and the punishment is years locked away from the life you had. Or is justice just whatever a judge says, regardless of what that is? Stalking someone could get you locked up. Unless you're one of the 30,000 exceptions who work for the NSA, in which case stalking people is your job. Killing someone would be wrong, no? Unless you work for the military, in which case you're a hero. People like Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama can get thousands of likes and shares for saying what happened at the latest mass shooting was tragic, when they're responsible for killing thousands of people all over the world, and expanding the power of the state to make it easier for others to do it too. To people who believe in the political system, you can drop bombs on weddings on the other side of the world and still be thought of as a compassionate person we should vote for. We can hold these beliefs without dissonance because the state's violence doesn't count as violence. They're defending your right to work 10 hours a day and pay taxes. As a substitute for real freedom, Americans love imaginary freedom. Look at how much the, the right wing claims to believe in freedom when they despise it in practice. They've decided long ago that any immigration beyond the merest trickle needs to be severely punished. They've never cared about mass incarceration and prison slavery and even talk about how more people should be locked up. Under incarceration, you have got to be joking. 
More recently, they've been passing bills criminalizing abortion, criminalizing teaching history, criminalizing expressing yourself. Basically, if you don't conform to every aspect of their society, you're a criminal. In fact, they're going so far as to approve of inspecting children's genitals when putting them on teams. Because for all they say they care about children, right-wingers really just want to hurt people of all ages. And the most superficially legitimate way to hurt people is by using the state. In the past few months, they've taken to calling everyone who doesn't hate queer people groomers. But they never say a word about people actually proposing to legally molest children because they're fellow Republicans. In case you were wondering, yes, that is Matt Walsh, the guy who used topless photos of a teenager without their permission to make his documentary. But read the tweets. The original one says, at Blake Ward Love. It should be illegal for anyone of any age to transition, period. Matt Walsh quote tweets and says, yes, put another way, it should be illegal for doctors to do this to anyone of any age. Think of the fear of freedom these sentiments betray. Some people are so afraid someone might act differently, including adults making decisions for themselves that don't harm anyone. They say it shouldn't be allowed presumably meaning the state should punish you for it, and if not, these right-wingers will no doubt take the law and morality and God into their own hands. I think we can safely put to rest any claims these right-wingers make about caring about children's welfare. Aside from the fact that gender transition has been a safe medical procedure for decades, these people are saying even adults should not be allowed out of the net. They're willing to punish people physically and emotionally for daring to be themselves. Any challenge to the status quo has to be met with righteous anger and violence. Freedom is the enemy to them. You're allowed specific rights, like the right to kill gay and trans people, but not the right to exist as yourself in public. I don't mean to pick on Americans exclusively. In my experience, all cultures have values hardly any of the people believe in, but think makes their culture special. In each case, this belief in national or culture-wide values is a product of propaganda. The same propaganda that tells them they're a country in the first place. You are a country, and this is what you believe. It's actually quite normal and harmful. Propaganda turns brothers into enemies as they find themselves on different sides of an imaginary line. It leads people to work for their country by following orders, like beating up their compatriots and shooting foreigners. Because doing whatever the powerful tell you to do is loyalty and bravery and honor and patriotism and freedom. They don't question the words. They value the institutions, regardless of what they actually do. Even if you hate the president, following his orders is for freedom. Evidence right before your eyes doesn't have to sway you if you're not interested in being swayed. Americans and others love police and soldiers because police and soldiers defend imaginary freedom. I'm not entirely convinced all these patriots are entirely convinced that any of these people defend their freedom, but they keep saying it to train everyone to believe it, and they now have an excuse to hate the person if they don't believe it. You know? What, you don't love the police and the military? Do you hate freedom? They claim not to love the state course, by saying, I love my country, not my government, 
but they venerate the people who enforce all its policies. And they love its borders and prisons and laws, you know, the core functions of the state. So they support that, the state, everything it does, its agents. <laughs> so when he claims not to trust the state or to believe in small government, are just lip service to ideals they've never believed in. But the badge wearers aren't the only ones upholding imaginary freedom. You've also got imaginary democracy. Because obviously, you know, no one could ever take away your freedom if they were elected. You've got the imaginary free press, which is always vigilantly guarding freedom by telling people whatever Rupert Murdoch wants them to think. Then there's the Constitution, which secures everyone's rights, unless for any reason the state chooses to ignore it, like it does every day. I was assured we didn't have to worry about our freedom, because someone else is defending it for us, even though they never have. I was never taught to care about evidence, either, just to believe in the assurances of the adults around me. You're free, unless you commit the ultimate crime, which is any crime, because crime is bad, no matter what the law says, and the state is justified in doing anything to you if you break the law. Under imaginary freedom, you can be under the state's constant surveillance and threat of kidnap, but still be free. No wonder so many people believe in it. The so-called democratic state exists to give people the illusion that their voices and votes matter. All states use violence in the service of a small number of people. That's how they're designed. There's no way they can be accountable to all the people because that's not what a state is. Voting means you have a negligible, and you know it is, negligible say in who gets to vote on which laws get passed. What part of that makes you think you're in control? What part of it makes you think the state has to defend you and your rights? Does it mean they only pass laws that are good for your freedom? Do they ever pass laws like that? Most laws and court decisions exist to give power to campaign contributors or to the system to enforce their will. Like this one from the other day, empowering Border Patrol to go pretty much everywhere they want. Most people are satisfied with the illusion of democracy means freedom because at least it's not like in those dictatorships where they don't even get a vote. They don't get to wave signs around fruitlessly like we can. And since people are expected to worship the military, we're supposed to thank them for that vote and, and that freedom to hold signs and whatever other freedoms you imagine you have. Because the system is assumed to represent and work for the people, dying for the system is dying for the people. So not wanting to vote between a douche and a turd is an insult to people who died for the state in everyone's favorite war, World War II. Yeah, it's really convoluted logic, but if you never question it, it seems obvious. Obviously, those people died for my right to vote for people who take my freedom away. When you only believe in imaginary freedom, you don't understand real freedom and you don't care about it. So you don't recognize when it gets taken away, or even encourage the loss of other people's freedom, not realizing or caring that yours is slipping away too. As MLK said, a threat to justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And to me, freedom is pretty much the same as justice. True justice would mean we were all free, not, not that some judge decided you weren't guilty of behavior the state had criminalized. Your freedom depends on everyone else's freedom. The more people willing to stand with you to help you become or remain free, the more secure your freedom is. And we'll only ever truly be free when no one can oppress anyone. Because if someone can enslave another person, they can enslave you. The police in the US 
Work for the same people as the slaves who mine the parts for your phone. Shit, they don't even really work for people. They work for institutions. People occupy seats and get replaced all the time. The institutions remain because people want to use them to wield power. Because power is in the institution, not the person. Because institutions are highly organized. Corporations are an obvious example, plus the police, which can mobilize 20 guys with guns in two minutes to arrest you for the weed in your glove compartment. Most bureaucracies are really organized. We pretend bureaucracy can't get anything done, but what we mean is it doesn't do anything for us. It gets plenty done. As society unravels in the age of climate change, state violence and right-wing violence will increase dramatically. Both groups already kill Americans every day. The struggle for freedom has never been more urgent. We can build a movement for freedom, but it needs to have the will to defend itself against the constant violence it'll face. Fortunately, there are a lot of us. At least together we stand a chance. Find each other, fight the power, and stay alive. On a deeply unserious note, here are some of the videos I was planning to make before that thing that happened.